If you've got a spare dollar lying around, you could be a homeowner by tomorrow morning. Actually, scratch that, you could have the keys to your very own mansion. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, that's because it probably is. Whenever you can pick up a million dollar mansion for pennies, there's usually a catch. And you're about to see exactly what we're talking about. From party penthouses in New York with sinister reputations to one of the country's most geographically isolated properties, and even the famous former homes of controversial celebrities. Strap in for a tour of the mansions you couldn't even pay us to live in. Living in a lakeside rock star mansion with more bedrooms, bathrooms, and amenities than a kid could ever imagine. It sounds like something out of a fairy tale. But what's the good of having such a postcard-worthy house if you've got nobody within hundreds of miles to share it with? Over here on the windy shores of Lake Superior in Michigan, you'll find Grano Loma, a sprawling log cabin that holds the title of the largest of its kind in the country. This thing is seriously huge. It spans close to 2,600 square feet, boasts 23 bedrooms, and comes with a bonus four separate apartments in a bungalow-style outbuilding. There is a private marina, a hot tub fit for a king, and a massive garden area. It was listed for sale for a whopping $40 million, but even after slashing that price in half, interest has been almost non-existent. So how come the buyers aren't circling like sharks? On the one hand, being an historic building, Gran Olama's interior is severely outdated, with wall-to-wall -wall taxidermy. It would take millions to redo all the rooms. On the other hand, it's alarmingly remote. The nearest major city, Green Bay, is almost 200 miles south. Oh, and did we mention the bone-chilling winters? Imagine the cost of heating this place year after year. Yeah, no thanks, we'll pass. From Michigan, let's hop down to New Jersey, where the peculiar house at 44 Pleasant Avenue in Montclair sits unwanted, unsold, and unloved. On the outside, it presents as a historical, quaint, and eye-catching home. Would you rather buy two Big Macs or an entire house? It's not as stupid a question as you'd assume, because believe it or not, this Montclair house can be all yours for just 10 measly dollars. Of course, there's a little catch. Well, a pretty big catch, actually. The land on which it sits has been commissioned for the site of eight more houses to be built. So what does that mean exactly? If you want to buy this 100-year-old house, you have to physically move it. Upheaving foundations, laying new ones, hiring movers, and obtaining council permits to literally drag a house down the road on the back of a truck, the costs add up to be astronomical. Not to mention that you'd have to avoid exposure to the toxic lead paint and asbestos embedded within its walls while doing so. Considering that it's historically protected, that's easier said than done. The simple truth is, this American estate would cost considerably more to move and restore than it would to buy it in the first place. Seems like a whole lot more effort than it's worth. Wouldn't it be sweet to live in a celebrity house? When prospective buyers find out that Brad Pitt or David Beckham or the Queen of England once lived in this house, holy smokes, that sends the buying price skyrocketing. But if the house in question is 50 cents old mansion, this enormous piece of real estate in Connecticut, then that couldn't be further from reality. 50 Cent purchased the mammoth-sized property from none other than Mike Tyson for $4.1 million back in 2003. Since trying to sell it for $18.5 million, the response has been nothing but crickets. But why? What's wrong with it? The house sports two stunning pools, one indoors and one outdoors, plus a hot tub, several game rooms, a recording studio, a pair of basketball courts, and, believe it or not, a nightclub. All up, there are 52 rooms in this palace, 21 of which are bedrooms. Its unfathomable size is the main reason for its failure to sell. Even the most extravagant billionaires out there don't need a 52-room house. The ongoing heating, electricity, and cleaning costs would be absurd. The rapper continually slashed the selling price, eventually dropping it by as much as 84% to a lowly 2.9 million. Could you live in a house this big? Seems a little over the top, don't you think? Speaking of over the top, turn your attention to the one-of-a-kind, $100 million Neverland Ranch. Sitting in Santa Barbara County, California, this property is as much of a house as it is an amusement park. With a 50-seat movie theater, a dance studio, barns, a fire station, a Disney-themed railway station and train, a lagoon-style swimming pool, and a tennis court. The property spans a humongous 2,700 acres, and yet, even though the selling price has been lowered again and again, savvy real estate buyers have stayed away. The attitude stems from one reason and one reason alone, 
the tainted legacy of its former owner, renowned pop superstar Michael Jackson. The rebranded Sycamore Valley Ranch was last seeking $31 million, less than a third of its original asking price of $100. It sat on the market for close to five years without so much as a nibble of interest before having its listing removed. Despite its fairy tale facade, the public prefers to steer clear of this controversial landmark. As we hurtle from west coast to east coast, have a gander at this luxurious apartment over in the ritzy Upper East Side of Manhattan. It recently belongs to Gianni Agnelli, one-time husband to Bridget Bardot, but he bought it from none other than the legendary fashion designer Roy Halston Froek. Roy purchased the party pad way back in 1974, so it should come as no surprise that this sleek apartment, with its notable wide open spaces and minimalist design, became a non-stop party hub in the 70s, welcoming a long list of well-known personalities. It was listed for sale for $38 million in 2011 and remained unsold for the better part of a decade, even after the price was slashed to $24 million. Those who could afford it simply preferred to buy something that doesn't come with such a controversial, colorful, dramatic reputation. And they'd probably prefer a place that featured hand railings on the stairs as well. As we skip across the pond to the UK, 25 miles outside of London, we'll find this jaw-dropping mega mansion. Back in 2005, with an asking price of $138 million, this was the most expensive house on the planet. And you're about to see why. With 50,000 square feet of space, it's larger in size than both Buckingham Palace and Hampton Court Palace. To declare this place was fit for a king would be an understatement. Sitting on over 58 acres of land, this enviable residence boasts, ready for this, 103 separate rooms. Imagine playing hide-and-seek in this place. That number includes 24 bedrooms, each paired with its own beautiful marble-lined N-suite bathroom, plus a squash court, home theater, wine cellar, sauna, gym, equestrian field, soccer pitch, bowling alley, tennis court, and a dedicated panic room. Five stunning swimming pools line the property, and the $6 million marble-heated driveway is worth more than most houses in the country on its own. So why does nobody want to buy it? The bottom line is that it's just too darn expensive. Nobody needs a place this big. You'd pay millions in regular bills and upkeep alone. Have you ever wanted to live in your own castle? Well, you could have, because Bannerman Castle in New York was up for sale. There was just one issue. It's only, well, barely half a castle. The residence, which was initially used as a place to store artillery, blew up in 1920. Then, half a century later, a fire swept through the building, effectively destroying the roof and the foundations. What we were left with was a collection of crumbling walls on an island only accessible by boat, the boat which, by the way, sank to the bottom of the Hudson during a storm in 1950. Without much interest from the public, the Bannermans eventually sold the decaying castle and the land on which it sat to New York State, who've since closed the area to the public and sold the relics to the Smithsonian. Over in Europe, so long as you choose the right country, the cost of living and the cost of real estate is exceptionally cheap. Far Eastern nations like Romania and Bulgaria are budget-friendly. Likewise, Poland and Hungary. Rarely does anybody put the popular tourist nation of Italy in that same basket. That's about to change. In the town of Ololai, these homes are practically being given away. We're not kidding here. You can buy your very own house in Sardinia's mountain region of Barbagia for just one dollar. Well, technically it's one euro, which is about a buck twenty. Still a pretty serious bargain in our books. So why have these Mediterranean stone-built houses not been swept up like hotcakes? Because the incredible offer comes with a rather important asterisk. The properties are in terribly poor condition, and buyers must commit to a refurbishment within three years, which will likely cost about $25,000. It's all part of a wider government plan to rejuvenate the community. With a dwindling population, Ololai is at risk of becoming a ghost town. If you like the sound of a $1 home, but don't feel like flying across the Atlantic, then there's another bargain basement house up for grabs in San Francisco. The Golden City is one of America's most expensive, hands down, which makes the fact that there's a $1 house up for grabs all the more surprising. Officially known as Historic Home Number 54, and dubbed the Queen Anne for its Victorian style, this property sits in the East Bay, in the area of Hercules, 
the local government intended to turn it into a visitor center and even started the renovations by slicing the entire home in half. But then the plan fell through and it just sat there abandoned. Now the city of Hercules is allowing anyone to buy it for just 100 pennies as long as they take it away. So while the debilitating home could be yours for less than the price of a cup of coffee, it'll drain a serious hole in your wallet to figure out how to carefully relocate it. Not to mention stick it back into one piece again. Over in Detroit, a plan is in place to revitalize the city. Vacant homes across the metropolitan area are being auctioned off for prices that are just plain silly. As little as $1,000. While that's a fair chunk more than the single buck houses in Italy, it's far from a $138 million UK mansion, that's for sure. Take this one, for example. With seven bedrooms and five bathrooms, this historic Tudor-style home seems like an absolute bargain. You're probably admiring the old world charm, which is reminiscent of its 1920s original build. But when you step inside, you might have second thoughts. The early 20th century construction hasn't changed one bit. With an immediate need for new electrical wiring, plumbing, and floors, a home like this would cost tens of thousands of dollars to get back to a livable standard. And plenty more if you're after a fully modern renovation. Would it be worth the effort? Or would you rather just buy a new house and save yourself all that hassle? Out of all the properties we've seen today, which one would you most like to live in? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to The Richest, and have a great day. Catch you next time.